just a disclaimer, this story can be graphic. I want people, mostly women, to know the beauty of birth and also the trauma of birth. No matter how perfect your birth is, there will always be something. So that being said, if you are newly pregnant um, or right about to give birth, probably should not watch this. It might scare you. When I first had Theo, my one of my cousins came to see me and I didn't know she was pregnant at the time because she wasn't far enough along to tell people and she told me that she basically like had like a anxiety attack in the car ride home hearing my story. So it's not the worst story in the world. It's not the most painful story in the world. It's just that was my experience and it was really raw at the time when I was telling her. Also that being said, my birth story is my birth story. Your birth story is your birth story. Birth is birth. Birth is hard. It is an accomplishment no matter what you do, no matter what you go through. It is a roller coaster of emotions, roller coaster of primal instinct, roller coaster of hormones. My interpretation of the best birth might not be your interpretation of the best birth. You might disagree with some of the choices that I made. They're my choices and I'm just telling people my story. I'm hoping that uh, sharing my story will give motivation and just encourage women to uplift each other, to celebrate your birth. When I was pregnant with Theo, I heard a lot about a traumatic things that happened and really bad experiences, but you don't really hear about good experiences. My experience was overall like 90% good. There was one traumatic thing that happened at the end. So I would say that that went really well. Everything went best case scenario for sure, except for that one thing, side note. Also, I know I'm not in the best getup right now, but we are going through a heat wave and it is 36 degrees celsius here in the edmonton area so edmonton alberta canada and it is so hot this is why i'm just wearing shorts and a tank top and my hair is up so i'm so sorry that i did not glam for you but it is too hot like this is glamming for me i feel like my face is melting off anyways um when i was close to giving birth to theo i was i went to see my midwife and I was like 40 weeks and she said if on that next Monday if I wasn't experiencing any labor symptoms that we would talk about med getting medically induced whatever our plans were with that and I really really didn't want to get medically induced just because most of the time once you start off with medical intervention it's like a domino effect to getting medical intervention and I wanted a home birth and a pool birth and I had my midwife and doula ready so I just didn't even want to go into the hospital to get a simple induction procedure. What I did, and I highly highly recommend this, I went to an acupuncturist to get induced. Usually, well this is what my acupuncturist said, for new moms it's between three to five days uh, back to back of going to the acupuncturist. She won't really touch your belly like at all Like don't worry about needles going into your belly. That's not how she does it or they sorry There is male acupuncturist, but I'm talking about my acupuncturist. They'll actually go into your toes They do something to your womb and they like tighten it up and they basically get ready for birth It's crazy like it's crazy guys like as soon as she put the needles into my toes one they hurt for like 30 seconds It's like Ow, but like it hurts when you're pregnant because you're already super sensitive and two as soon as she put the needle in I felt Theo move like he was like angry that things were tightening so I called her and I was 41 weeks maybe in two days so I was overdue and I called her and I was like please help me I need this baby out of me and she booked me in back to back and for three days and then the fourth day I went into labor. So at 41 weeks and five days, which was July 26, 2020, around 5 p.m., I started feeling cramping pains. I didn't really know what they were, but I knew that it was some sort of progression. So I put my pump on. So pumping or stimulating the breasts releases the hormone oxytocin, which is also the hormone that 
helps labor kind of go in its cycle. You can create oxytocin by stimulating your breasts by pumping. I think sex too, like a bonding hormone. I put my pump on and I started pumping to get it going and get more oxytocin. So because I was pumping, it progressed really quickly. From 5 p.m. to when I felt the cramping start to 7 p.m., I was pumping and I was like feeling more and more cramping. It started to be like, it's like period pain in your, I felt it in my back and it was just kind of like, ooh, you know, but I could still like move stuff, whatever. And then by 7 p.m. it got to the point where I was like laying, just kind of humming for like 30 seconds or whatever for how long it was. By that point I was like, okay, I'm gonna take the pump off and I'm gonna go downstairs. So while I was pumping, I was timing it and my app kept saying, go to the hospital, go to the hospital, go to the hospital. Like, what do you mean go to the hospital? I have to go to the hospital when I'm just like feeling like these mild cramping pains that are like meh. So I didn't listen. So I took the pump off at 7 p.m. and I went downstairs. Shane was like, oh, I might as well do the dishes just in case baby's gonna be coming today and like we should like clean up a little bit. So he was upstairs doing the dishes and I went downstairs because downstairs was where we set up Theo's birth area. So we had the area for the pool and then we had a separate room with a queen size bed with like sheets and everything all decked out. Then there was a bathroom down there as well with a shower. So I went down there and then I was like prepping the bed, getting the pillows off and stuff. And I went to go like lift my leg to get on the bed and my water broke. At 7.30 p.m. my water broke. So I don't remember exactly like how long I labored for at that point. I wasn't really paying attention. Um, the pain started to get really, really bad and it was mostly my back. So I was, I was in communication with my doulas, I had two, and one of them was talking to me being like, okay, well baby might be in the wrong position because your pain's in your back. So she said, do, I forget what it's called, I think it's like the three mile a minute or something. But basically it's three positions and each position you, you sit in for 30 minutes each time and it basically puts the baby pulls it out of wherever it is, and then it kind of turns it and then puts it back in, in the proper position. It's weird, anyways. So um, I tried that, and I tried the first position, which the first position, if you do yoga, is kind of like child's pose. Obviously, you have a belly, so you have to do like extended child's pose. You have like a, blank, a pillow like under here, and then a pillow here, and you're like laying in child's pose position. I did that for 30 minutes and that felt fine. And then it was time to switch to the next position, which is where you like put a wall of pillows and you kind of put like your leg like over the pillows and then and you lay there. I love how I'm trying to describe this. I literally could not get into that position. I tried, I went like this. It was so painful. I couldn't do it and it actually caused me to vomit a couple times because of the pain that I was in. My doula said, okay, stop the positions. Obviously your body doesn't like it. While I was doing the positions, my husband, Shane, was on the phone with doula. I was still in like early labor to them because I, I this was like maybe the middle of the night. It wasn't that much time. She was like, oh, we don't need to come yet. But as soon as I puked, I was like, I need my doulas here. Like I need a doula, I need support. I'm like puking, like that's how much pain I am in. Shane was on the phone with one of them and was like, okay, she just needs like someone here. You guys have to come. They were about 25 minutes away. But one of them was on her way. The other one that was on the phone, she was like, get in a shower and turn the water on to hot and put it on your back. So for some reason, I've decided that upstairs, so there was a ba tiny bathroom in the basement with a stand-up shower. The stand-up shower was very tiny, and I thought that like I wouldn't be able to like turn. I don't know what I was thinking at that point. Honestly, I don't know. I was like, okay, let's go upstairs into our tub-shower combo, which if you have a tub-shower combo, you have a curtain, which relieves a lot of the steam it doesn't hold in a lot of steam like a glass door shower does. That was a mistake. Got in the shower and it wasn't working. It wasn't hot enough. It wasn't taking my pain away. I really needed to sit. My legs were getting so weak because I couldn't sit this entire time. I tried to go on my hands and knees just to give my legs a bit of a break. My doula got to the house. She took one look at me. She looked at Shane. She was called the midwife. And I found out later it was because she 
was scared that she would have had to deliver Theo by herself because that's how far along I was. And she was shocked because of how fast it was. The midwife was about 30 minutes away. I was still in the shower and the midwife came to check me and I was seven to eight centimeters dilated. So I like progressed really quickly. And then she was like, okay, maybe we should set up the pool. So we went downstairs. I went in the small shower, which really, really helped me definitely do that. Smaller showers with glass doors are way better. And I put the water on hot and they were filling the pool. The thing about that is I'm using all the hot water that's supposed to go in the pool. They had to boil pots of water. They had to use the kettles just to put hot water in the pool. <laughs> so it took a while. Like I felt like I needed to push. There was a lot of pressure down there. I was like, I don't want to deliver this baby standing up in a shower because I was scared that it would like slip or something like everywhere. I don't know. I was like, I need to push, I need to push, I need to get in the pool, I need to get in the pool. Also, I again, I couldn't sit at all, so getting in the pool sounded amazing to me because all my weight would be lifted away. I'd be able to relax my legs. Side note, if you do have a home birth or even a clinic birth, so at like the midwifery clinic, sometimes the midwifery, but doulas carry pools and you just buy the liner, it's like a reusable pool, and then the liner just gets thrown out. It's just like a common question that people ask. I went in the pool and I labored in the pool. I don't know how long I labored in the pool. I wish I could tell you, but I don't know. When you're in contractions, you really just focus on contractions and then relaxing after. I'm focusing on that contraction that I'm in, getting through it, and then relaxing and then getting through another one and then relaxing. Time goes by and you don't even know. I researched like a whole bunch of things for pain management. This was all natural, no drugs. It was like things like music. Music did not help. Shane asked me when I was laboring if I wanted music and I was like, literally, I don't care. There's like sour candies. Right before you go into a full on contraction, you can pop like a sour candy in your mouth. It will kind of fill up the sensation, pain sensation in your brain so then it, you don't feel as much pain. So I had like a whole bunch of candies and everything. Didn't use them. I didn't want to eat anything. One thing that did help me, which I looked like a crazy person, I had a bun in my hair, similar to this, and I just like grabbed my bun and like the pony, and I just yanked all my hair before I went into a contraction. That pain subtracted this pain. Shane was like, am I gonna have a bald wife by the time this baby's born? <laughs> I couldn't do nothing. I have to move, do something when I'm in pain. Also, you give out a lot of energy when you vocalize. I moaned. I was moaning in a too high of a pitch. Apparently, if you moan lower, then it goes lower into your belly and actually helps the baby like go down. So it was really funny. I always joke about it because I always say that if you were a bystander outside, you would think that there was like a whale calling soundtrack playing. Uh, and they were like, go lower. And I was like, uh, uh. <laughs> When I was in the pool, got checked again by midwife and she said that I was 10 centimeters dilated and that I could push whenever I felt like pushing. The thing with that is you have control over your body, which is awesome. You don't have like a doctor telling you when to push, but if you push for too long, then that's prolonged pushing, which can tire your pelvic floor and then you have like no muscle left at the end. Also, when you push whenever you want, your body is literally wanting to expel everything out of you because you want it out. So you're gonna poop. Let's talk about poop. This is a common thing. Women are scared of pooping during birth. They are embarrassed if they poop or they're ashamed for it. I've had that before where you get told you're not supposed to poop. Nurses and midwives and doulas, they all want you to poop because that means that you're pushing from the correct area. I've had it where people have said you're not supposed to poop and you need to push from your vagina, not your butthole. It's the same. You're pushing from your pelvic floor. So if you poop, it's no big deal. It might be embarrassing, but your midwife, probably every single birth she's had, there's been poop. Your doctor, probably every single birth he's had, there's been poop. Every natural birth, there's poop. Maybe epidural, I don't know. Maybe if you have an epidural, you don't poop because you don't feel that need before you need to do it. Don't be embarrassed by pooping. However, if you're in a pool, try not to poop in a pool because that's what I did. Side note, when you're in the middle of labor, you don't care if it's pooping water. You're literally like, get this baby out of me. I don't care what's around me. Shane was literally like, because I was laboring in poopy water.
My laboring, I kept pushing. So my progression would kind of leveled out, and so my midwife didn't really want to see that. Like she wants you to progress, so she kept recommending that I get out of the pool if I had enough energy to get out of the pool. And just the motion of taking your foot and stepping out of a pool can get things moving properly. I did that. I got out of the pool. They helped me out. They helped me on the bed. Basically, as soon as I got on the bed, I was ready to push, um, like really ready to push because I was so tired. My legs were so tired from holding me up for like 12 hours that I needed help. We had two midwives, my midwife and her partner, and then I had my doula and Shane. All of them were assisting me with birth at that moment. I was laying like this. Shane was on this side, on my right side, holding this leg up for me because I couldn't hold it myself because I would Charlie horse every single time that I lifted my legs or pushed. And then my doula was holding this leg. I had the midwife with like a tether. So I was holding that to give me some leverage because I had no ab muscle anymore. <laughs> and then I had my midwife going to deliver the baby. That was hilarious and a very bonding experience for all of us. Let's talk about the ring of fire. I feel like the ring of fire shouldn't be called the ring of fire. It should be called the ring of sandpaper because that's what it feels like. Any of you wondering what it feels like when they say the ring of fire? It doesn't feel like fire to me. It feels like sandpaper. So that's fun. I was pushing and his head came out. Uh, I passed the ring of fire, which was so painful. I thought that was the most pain that I was gonna feel during birth. And then we were almost done. And I was wrong. So he had something called shoulder dystocia. And it's where one or maybe both shoulders get stuck in the pelvis. And so it could be really mild or it could be really Severe. In a severe case, a doctors or midwives would have to break the baby's collarbone to get the shoulder out because obviously baby's bones, they're easily broken than, than my pelvis. So that's a severe case. Most of the time you can put your hand in, kind of turn them in weird ways to get them out. But when the baby's head comes out, they're supposed to do like a quarter turn and get one shoulder out and then do another quarter turn and then get another shoulder out. But Theo was not like that. He decided he wanted to go <laughs> and get both or get one side stuck. My midwife put her hands in to kind of move him to get the shoulder out. The other midwife that I was holding the tether was pushing on my belly to try to turn him this way. This was so painful. I reached max pain. I screamed at the top of my lungs. I prayed every time I tell this story I cry. I've never reached a point in my life where I've asked for my life to be over. I've never been severely depressed or in a bad place to be like my life can be done now. And in that moment, I didn't care. I prayed and I just said, I'm at my max of pain and I need this to end. Like when I prayed in my head, it wasn't necessarily end the labor. Help me deliver this baby, it was either or. I either die or I deliver this baby. But either way, the pain will stop. And that's all I wanted was the pain to stop because it hurt so bad. And it was probably 30 seconds to a full minute, maybe even less, honestly, I don't remember. It was fast, but obviously when you're in pain, things feel like forever. When you're in an emergency situation, things feel like forever and you're like, come on, let's go. And that is the most pain that I've ever felt. But hopefully putting this out there, not for anyone to judge me. That's a lot, I feel like, to say that I wanted it to end. And I don't need people telling me to be like, oh my god, why'd you say that about birth? That's not realistic. You're traumatizing new people. That was my experience. I'm not saying I regret it because that made it so much more real and worth it. Even Shane, like he was calm, cool, and collected the whole entire labor, supporting me and being like, you can do it. And then in that moment, looking down at Theo, Apparently he like turned purple
because he couldn't get oxygen because they don't take their first breath until they're fully out. It was like the whole aura of the room changed. My midwife tried to keep her cool because obviously as a care provider, you don't want to like freak out and make me freak out. Uh, she was like, you need to push, you need to push now. And I was like, I don't have any more muscle. I don't have any more muscle, like I can't. And Shane looked at me and he was like, Courtney, you need to push now. And he yelled at me and he was calm, cool, collected, like very calm voice the entire time. And that, he was like, you need to push. So I pushed with everything I had, which wasn't much. And he came out and that was great, but that experience made it more memorable for Shane. Obviously more memorable for me. Surprisingly, I didn't tear that much. I had three or four stitches and they were in the inside, which apparently my midwife was like, that's awesome because he got stuck and usually you just rip. So that was a plus. We didn't find out the gender, so we didn't know Theo was Theo. They put the baby on me and Shane was just like, there's a baby. And like, I was like, there's a baby. And we didn't even check what gender, it didn't matter until she was like, aren't you gonna look daddy? And then he was like, oh right. <laughs> then there was complications with like my placenta. They injected me with, I think it was oxytocin to stimulate contractions to get the placenta out. But my placenta was one, I was overdue, so there's like rippling of the placenta at that point, I guess. I forget what the actual term is. My placenta was very large, very thick and long cord. I actually needed two shots of oxytocin to get it out, and I also needed to go from the bed and walk to the bathroom to sit on the toilet because sometimes changing pelvis opening helps it come out. But my midwife was just like, the cord keeps coming. <laughs> Since it was a longer placenta, I think it took about an hour to get the placenta out. I wanted Theo off of me because I was dealing with stitches after the placenta was delivered. Because obviously like I had a natural birth, no drugs, so I wasn't numb down there already. So I had to like get the needles to make me numb. I didn't want Theo on me, so Shane had that bonding time with him when he was just born. Regarding the trauma of the whole like, I wanted the pain to end, which I feel like it's normal when you're in pain, you want the pain to end. That made giving birth so much more rewarding at the end. To accomplish that is like such a big deal. Every woman is made to give birth naturally. The pain is supposed to be there. This is my opinion, so don't judge me or don't be like, you're dissing all the other women, I'm not. Birth is birth and depending on like circumstances, like that's your story, that's what you chose, whatever. But my opinion for myself, not for others, for myself is that birth should be painful because you appreciate your accomplishment of giving birth that much more. It's like if you're in high school and you're studying 13 hours for a test and you get 80 to 100 percent and you're like yeah i did that i worked my butt off and i got that grade versus if you had a photographic memory and you're like yeah 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 i'm gonna get 100 percent every single thing in life that is worth it it's the journey not the end destination it's going through the hardships to get to the other side and being like, I did this. Even something like paying off debt, you know, you have a whole chunk of debt and then you're working your butt off to pay your debt off and then you finally pay all of that off and you're at zero owing. That is an accomplishment. That is something you worked for. If you paid off your house, like that is something you worked for. It was hard, it was long, but you did it. And that's the same thing with birth, in my opinion. So that pain is worth it to me. Yes, okay, not saying that C-section, you, you're not gonna feel accomplished. Or epidurals, because they go through their own journey. You have different recovery. C-section, that's a major surgery. You have to be really brave to go through that. Things can go wrong, like that can be really scary. Each situation is their own marathon, their own journey, even if you cancel out the pain. But for me, I wanted to try it with the pain. I wanted that pain. And I knew that if I was put in an atmosphere or a situation where 
painkillers were accessible, I would use them. If I was in a hospital, I would be like, no, I want them. Side note, another reason why I didn't get the epidural or didn't want it was because I've had past surgeries and I've always taken seven times my weight in drugs and I metabolize them so fast that I don't even think it would work. Um, so that's also why I didn't even want to go there because I feel like I'd be like so dope, doped up because they'd have to give me more than just the epidural that it wouldn't be worth it. Knowing that, I was like, no, let's not do it if we don't have to. Now, I'm totally fine if I have to. I'm not one of those people even risking my baby's life and my life just because I don't want drugs. If you need medical intervention, go for it. But I didn't want to choose it. I know a lot of people that have had C-sections with hard recoveries, easy recoveries, easy. You're still recovering, it's still a big surgery. I've had people that have done drugs and have had placental issues breastfeeding struggles because they had to be on antibiotics for some reason or like whatever. Your journey is your journey. I am saying my journey and my opinions on my journey. They are not to judge other women. I just wanna let everyone know that. That is the biggest accomplishment that I've had in my entire life is giving birth to Theo. It just means so much more that like, holy man, I did that. Now every time that I have a friend who gives birth uh, or is pregnant, I'm like, you can do this. You're built to do this. Women are literally built for this. Your body knows what to do. If you have natural birth, if you have an epidural, if you have C-section, it'll all be okay. My birth was amazing because of the support that I had and the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Knowledge empowers you. And so if you have the extra funds, I would highly, highly recommend a doula because they give you so, so much knowledge. A lot of women that I know who've just had hospital births don't know a lot of the things that I know now from being taught by my doula because they do like prenatal classes and stuff or take a prenatal class. And being prepared, for me at least, knowing possible outcomes and not just being slapped with all this new stuff right when you're in the middle of labor is very empowering. I wanted to put this video out there for all those women that have had bad experiences, good experiences, like to hear about women's experiences. I want to be positive. I hope that that came out. I know that there was a little chunk there where it was a little bit not negative, but not positive as well. But that trauma made it all worthwhile for me. Because of that experience, I wanted my same doula this time and the same midwife this time. And I get both of them this time. And this birth is going to be super, super different because it's twins, higher chance of possible C-section, lower chances of natural birth, lower chances of drug-free, higher chance that I might get an epidural. And to have the same people there really, really helped me. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more of the motherhood series that I'm going to be posting. Thank you for all the support. See you later.